nice to see you again. Let's just get to it, okay? You've got a, an issue, and the issue is the difference between kinetic and potential energy, the relationship of those two formulas, and how to actually work them together, you know, in a, in a uh, physics uh, type question. So, we're going to bring back a couple of things. Actually, I'm going to go get some macaroni first, because I'm starving. And uh, we'll bring back Herb, okay? Our good friend Herbert, the criminal, because he has potential when he's moving. That'll make sense soon enough. Okay, so here we have our example. Uh, I'm sorry if this pendulum ball is, uh, you know, brought out of out of focus here or something like that. Actually, I can move it for you so you can see it. Oh, there it is. We are going to use this pendulum method to explain kinetic and potential energy. Now, first things first, I've drawn uh, or I've written out our formulas. The potential energy, energy uh, P, is equal to the mass times gravity times the height or mass times acceleration times height. Now, the thing is with potential energy is as you bring something up, uh, to a specific height, it has energy to it. We converted our mechanical or our chemical energy uh, to, uh, to uh, and inputted it into the book that we put on the table or whatever. In this case, we're going to raise this pendulum up. Now, let's say that you rose this pendulum up, you physically took this ball and you put it up, and let's say this is a giant one, so let's give it a, a I don't care, um, 10 meters. Shoot, five, ten, yeah, 10 meters. Oh yeah, so we rose this thing up 10 meters, okay? Let's say that the mass of this ball is 5 kilograms, okay? Now, given our formula, we're ready to go, okay? Now, the thing is, let's say that this question is saying we rose the ball 10 meters up in the air and the ball has a mass of 5 kilograms. Calculate the potential energy. Step one. So, we're going to write down what is given. We were given that the mass is equal 5 kilograms and that the height was lifted up to 10 meters. Now, we also know that the acceleration or the force of gravity on planet Earth would have to be 9.81 meters per second squared. That's the effect of gravity that we all feel. So I'm just going to square these off so that you're not confused. Um, that is what is given. What is required? We are looking for the potential energy. So we have our, our formula. Um, let's solve it. 10 times 5 times 9.81. Okay. This will, let's see, 10, so 10 meters times 5 kg times 9.81 meters per second squared will equal, oh crap, what is that, about 590. Yeah, 0.5. Okay, so, f no, be 490. 490 um, 0.5 kilograms times meters time meters squared per second squared that's the unit which is joules okay that's another conversion kilograms times meters squared over second squared equals joules so this here pendulum when we raise it up has a um, has a complete potential energy of 490.5 joules to it and that's and that's it really now here's the kicker you see we rose this thing up and it has traveled let's say we raise it and this is an action right so it's actually gonna go over to here it's gonna and you know how a pendulum works if we raise it up 10 meters 5 kilogram ball and we drop it it's gonna swing over here and it's gonna stop and it's gonna swing back and it's gonna stop Okay. Now, if there was no such thing as um, resistance, this would go on forever. Newton's first law. But there is resistance. However, the thing is, when we're dealing with the same mass, the same object, we know that there is a point 
in this from from position A, let's call this position A, let's call this position B, and let's call this position C. One of these positions, okay, has motion to it. Two of them don't. A and C, we are assuming that the pendulum actually comes to a complete stop. Even though you may not be able to see it, it does come to a complete stop. No motion. When there's no motion, we have potential energy. Now, at point B, see, it's converting. When we let go of point A, on its way to B, it is converting all of that potential energy to kinetic energy. As soon as it reaches B, it is moving at its fastest rate because as soon as it starts going upwards again, it's going to be pulled down by the force of gravity and slow down. It's going to decelerate. So at point B, we know, we know without any doubt that potential energy has converted all the way to kinetic energy. Okay. Now we can figure out, we can use a roller coaster thing as well. A roller coaster is traveling at this velocity and has this mass. What's the kinetic energy? You can figure that out. Mass times velocity divided by two equals the kinetic energy. But in this kind of question, this is very, very special because all of its potential energy is being converted to kinetic energy at point B, right here. So, if we wanted to figure out the velocity, how fast this this ball is moving, let's do that, right? Let's find out, now what is given? Five kilogram ball raised at 10, here's the acceleration. Um, and we also now know that the potential energy is this, okay? If we know that, and we know that it's being converted to kinetic energy, well, how fast? Let's say we just, mm, cut the rope right there and the ball actually started to roll across the floor. At this point, how fast is the ball going to move? We can calculate that because we know that there is kin kinetic energy right here at point B was, was converted. Our potential energy from A is converted to kinetic energy in B and that energy is going to be conserved. So this is what is given and now that we know that that potential energy now equals the kinetic energy at point B, if we snip that rope, how fast is it going to move? Well, energy kinetic equals one half of the mass times velocity squared. Sorry, I forgot to put the squared there, right? So let's, re let's manipulate this formula, okay? So two times the kinetic energy, right? We're going to take out the two divided by mass, divided by mass, divided by mass squared equals the velocity. Okay, we're going to square that both sides. I hope you followed that. I went through it fast. Okay, now I'm just going to go over here, get some more room on my massive piece of paper. Um, so here's our formula. Velocity equals two times the kinetic energy divided by the mass squared. So velocity, which we don't know, equals two times 490.5 joules divided by, what's the mass again? Five kilograms. And we're gonna square root this homeboy, okay? And suddenly we have the velocity. I don't know what that is. Eight, 981, 981 joules divided by five. I don't know, okay? I just don't know, 5 kg. But whatever this is, divided by 5, we will have our velocity. And we're going to put a big square around it. So I hope this helps. You may, you may need to watch this again. But kinetic energy and potential energy can be equal, given this example. Okay? You just need to make sure that you walk your way through this. Once again, write down what is given, write down what is required, find a formula that will solve the problem, and then solve it. Put a square around it so I know where the answer is. Show your work. Okay? Talk your way through it, draw a picture, do whatever you need to do. But this is a great example uh, of, of the relationship between kinetic and potential energy. All the rest is just manipulating formulas and solving for different variables. So keep going. You got this.